Grey Worm leads an army of Unsullied to take Casterly Rock, the ancestral stronghold of House Lannister. He was ordered by Daenerys Targaryen, protector of the realm, mother of dragons, the unburnt, the breaker of chains. Two hours later. And the princess of Dragonstone. Now, as we all know, in the current season of Game of Thrones, Jaime Lannister leads his army to High Garden and leaves Casterly Rock undefended or lightly defended. In this battle, this is more of a what if scenario. What if Jaime Lannister defended with his full force at Casterly Rock? Would he be able to stop the army of Unsullied from taking his ancestral stronghold? Welcome to the Siege of Casterly Rock. All right, here we go. What's up guys? It's Apollo here and welcome to Casterly Rock. Now there's a few things I must mention before we dive into today's battle. First off, yes, it doesn't really look like Casterly Rock. Uh, there's no custom settlement for Casterly Rock, so you kind of have to use your imagination. By the way, this artillery is just shelling the Lannister position. Also, a very important thing I need to mention, the Unsullied did not attack by land, they attacked by sea. Well, I don't think there's any naval units, or I'm pretty sure there's not, so it didn't really make sense to, you know, for them to attack with ships, because it's just not there yet in the game. So they're attacking by land. Also, House Greyjoy shows up with some reinforcements, really no point of them showing up if there's no navy for them to attack. So with that out of the way, let's look at the army comps. We're going to stay in slow motion. Actually, we can do normal speed and just watch the bombardment. We do have time, a little bit of time before the uh, the battle really starts to pick up. So real quick, let's look at the, uh, the four players here. This is an online battle. I am leading one of the Unsullied. Here is uh, my army. I've got Grey Worm as my general. Lots of great spears, swordsmen, archers, and I do have one catapult. My ally over here has a very similar army. He's also bringing Grey Worm but my Grey Worm's the actual Grey Worm. This is just like a sub-commander. He also goes by Grey Worm. They all do. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but yeah, lots of lots of similar units and stuff. Great spears. I, like, I just can't wait to see the Unsullied take on Lannister. It's such an epic matchup. Now, for the Lannister factions, we're going to look at them as one giant army. Really cool men-at-arms, levies, pikes, and spears. Got great forces ready to fight to the death and defend their ancestral home here, their stronghold. Also, we have two Jaime Lannisters, so he's on the battlefield ready to fight to the death as well. So pretty cool stuff, guys. Let's now uh, get back to this battle where my artillery is still just softening softening up the defenders as Lannister prepares to uh, hold the walls. Oh, arrows are coming down. My archers are uh, releasing their arrows, uh, doing a pretty good job. They are out in the open. This is a strategy I like to do a lot in Attila, where I send up my archers with the siege towers, and they, like, my archers archers absorb most of the arrow fire. That way, my siege towers don't get destroyed from, like, fire arrows and whatnot. Uh, but my, yeah, my siege towers are really, are getting really close. I was telling my ally, is like, go, man, don't leave me alone. I can't attack alone. I need your help. This is going to be a very difficult assault. Uh, but very, like, I love the, uh, the colors in this battle. It's very bright and colorful. And there's gonna be a lot of red today. And I'm not talking about the Lannister banners. I'm talking about blood. Uh, so my arrows are doing a good job of suppressing these troops, getting a good amount of kills. I'm also trying to burn some of the buildings to, uh, weaken their troops. It does, a, a minus in morale, melee attack, and melee defense, which is something we're really gonna need, especially since we have, like, a thousand less troops. Yeah, so we're outnumbered. The thing, the reason we're outnumbered is because the Unsullied are elite forces. So we don't have a lot, but they're very good. So we're going to rely on their skill to try to take the city. And here we go. Here comes the first charge from House Lannister. He's sending in some uh, pretty weak swordsmen. And I make a very costly mistake here. I act, you know, all the units look so similar. And I actually sent in my pikes first into battle. That was a costly mistake, and hopefully I will be able to recover from that mistake. But yeah, pikes are really good at cleaning out choke points. It's not a unit that you want to send in first. You want to send them last, basically, to take the town center. So that was a big mistake by me. Uh, but what can you do? What can you do? All right, so let's head back here where more of my Unsullied are just storming Casterly Rock. 
charging, ready to take on the next wave of Lannister troops. Here we go. Oh man, I love the animations. I love watch the Unsullied fight. It's so cool. Like it's, I mean, it's not new animations, but it's so cool. Like because they're skilled with the spear, right? So it's just so cool to see them like get really fancy spear kills. You know, it's so Hollywood, but you know, whatever. Game of Thrones, you know. I guess you can't really say Game of Thrones is Hollywood. I don't know. Whatever. You know what I mean. Here comes more troops. Artillery still crashing down. That was actually my last hit. And I get a really good hit on the uh, the men in arms here of, uh, of Lannister. I'm going to go ahead and form up my lines real quick. They're going to look very intimidating using some, uh, you know, psychological warfare. And now we're going to charge in and try to overwhelm them. I love that shield charge. Back over here, my ally is finally sending in his troops as well to support my attack. So this is just a full-on wall battle for the outer walls of Casterly Rock. Here comes the Unsullied. Oh, that Lannister getting a kill. He's like, look guys, I killed an Unsullied. I feel so good. I especially, so oh, wait, wait, he might die here. What is he though? What unit is this? Uh, no, he's a uh, men at arms. So, okay, that's not too, I thought he was like a levies unit, you know? But uh, no, he's doing pretty good. Good job, you killed an Unsullied. Uh, but yeah, the fight's still waging on over here. We're not going after the pikes. We're not going after this. Like, this is just death and disaster. So we're going to focus most of our attention over here, which looks so cool. I love them. Like, this, the, this uh, cinematic shot here of them, them leaving the, uh, the siege towers. Arrows are still coming down, trying to support our boys as they continue to push back House Lannister. And uh, it's getting pretty rough over here. You know, I've lost a lot of troops, uh, but I'm definitely doing a lot of damage. It's really the arrow towers in the back there that are just killing most of my men. So I need to try to quickly defeat this Lannister infantry and go capture that gate. Yeah, victorious. Back over here too, he accidentally uh, sallied out some levies. So I've got my unsullied uh, melee going after them. So this is actually going to be a sneaky force. I guess you could say like this is the, the sneaky force that goes through the, uh, the sewer system. Uh, but they had a ram. They were going to go around and bring down the, uh, the gate. But instead, I told them to drop it and face this force out in the open field. And uh, it's going pretty well. Yeah, get him. Get him. Chop his head off. There you go. Very nice. And more of my forces uh, pushing forward. I've committed about most of my army. I've got my elite troops. This is the elite Unsullied Short Spears. Uh, I have not sent them in yet, obviously. But uh, my ally really has uh, a lot more reserves than I do. So I've really committed a lot of my forces into this fight so far. And I need to commit a lot more because Lannister is starting to overwhelm my forces quite a bit. Quite a bit. You can see my uh, my spears are surrounded here, so I do have some reserves though, some reinforcements. Quick, men! Your men need the support. Come on, charge! Where are you going? Wait, no, go charge! Because I'm just letting them group up a little bit there. There we go. Now they're charging. Let's get the point of view of these soldiers. Oh wait, no, that's not the point of view I wanted. I didn't want this. I wanted to see someone charging in, but that's right. Only part of the units charging in, but that's okay. It's a much needed relief. Uh, we've taken the walls over here. So we're starting to clean out the uh, Lannister outer defenses. And we still have a little bit more ways to go. There's some resistance in the outer walls. But overall, I think so far, we've taken the walls. But at what cost? We've lost a good amount. More than a thousand men. But we've actually killed a lot more of them than us. Now, to be fair, we've killed weaker troops. He's got more of his elite troops um, kind of in the back reserve, like his pikes and, and heavy swordsmen. But at least we're starting to kill a lot of his troops, which is good, obviously. <laughs> uh, but my Unsullied, yeah, look at him. Look at this kill. Boom. I love it, man. I love that. So good. Very nice, Unsullied. Very nice. So more of my troops pushing. We're now going to, uh, we really can't slow down. If we, if we slow down, we're just going to get peppered down by arrows. We have to keep moving. And his pikes over here was just, they were evaporated by our archers, which is really excellent to see. So his pikes are, uh, well, they're breaking. Well, they're pretty much going to break pretty soon. But he's got some uh, archers in the secondary defense who are putting down a lot of fire arrow uh, volleys, which is doing quite a bit of damage. But as of right now, we're still trying to take care of uh, what's left of Lannister over on this side. Let's do uh, some nice slow shots here. Let's make it even slower. There we go. 
So a good fight. A great fight. Now I have to send up my elite troops. So yeah, I pretty much spent most of my army trying to take out this one little corner of Casterly Rock. Hopefully it will be worth it. My ammo for my archers is pretty much spent at this point as well, uh, which is not good. <laughs> you gotta try to uh, conserve some of your ammo for late game. Uh, because, you know, if you, if you, like, for example, they're holding back a lot of pikes. And if you have a lot of ammo for those pikes, they're really easy to take care of. Uh, so that's why, that's like a great reason why you need to hold on to your ammo. But anyways, we killed the Lannister resistance. Now we're going to move on and take this gate. And I should be able to send up more reinforcements from this side as well. So, uh, it's been a bloody fight and very exciting fight so far. But we need to try to recover and uh, my allies trying to hide his men from these uh, from the fire arrows, but it just doesn't seem to be well. It's it's not like they're dying at a great number, but it still sucks that they can't escape the wrath of the Lannister archers who are just openly firing from this uh, this back defense. So now our goal here is to move and take this center position then we're going to push up and eventually push for the town center hopefully we have enough troops to do it if we kind of zoom out here you can see just like the the damage done for both sides overall the balance of power is still pretty even uh but we're starting to lose a lot more men uh, than we're than we're killing of them because they are sitting back and firing their their arrows which is always very very costly very deadly so we need to go ahead and just no hesitation we got to keep going or we're sitting ducks or we're gonna die to the fire arrows so yeah uh, so yeah now we're pushing forward and uh, I've got what's left of my army I told my ally look man we gotta go we gotta charge in this is our only hope those archers are gonna chew us up not only the archers but the arrow towers as well so here comes the next charge here we go I've got some Unsullied and Second Sun Longbows. A lot of my archers, like I said, used up their ammo, so I'm going to use them as a uh, melee unit. Come on, Second Suns. You are not the first Suns, but the second. <laughs> Get in there. Oh, good kill by the Lannister, but his unit is destroyed. And we're going to keep pushing. I'm, I'm very aggressive here, trying to take out his archers. Now, it seems like most of his archers used up their ammo as well. In this mod, I don't know, like, if it's just this mod or Total War Attila, but you can use up archer fire extremely fast. So that's something you got to watch out for. Uh, but my longbows, actually not doing that bad in melee. They're doing, I mean, they are taking on another archer unit, but still, I think they're doing pretty good. Pretty good. So my Unsullied here, my melee unit, they are uh, still fighting the good fight. Oh, that guy just got kicked in the balls and he lost his head for it. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> that wouldn't work. <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> you can't kick an Unsullied in the balls. <laughs> that, that, that's whatever. Maybe he was a rare one. He got away with keeping his junk. Who knows? Uh, but more and more of the troops are storming across, trying to take the gate. Over on this side, we're also pushing. Uh, we got some elite Unsullied uh, trying to break the Lannister defense. Oh, look at this guy. He's in, like, bright blue. Who is this guy? What is that? <laughs> I don't know. It's just got some bright blue uh, under armor, it looks like. So, an epic matchup here. More Unsullied charging in. Clashing shields with the Lannister. The Lannister, this is some elite infantry here from House Lannister. But uh, because we've got them surrounded, we should be able to crush them here. Let's go ahead and zoom out. One of our arrow towers are, or siege towers are on fire. Back over this way, I'm actually, I've got some javelins. And I've got them supporting um, this unit here. I'm going for the pikes. But unfortunately, because of the angle and the men-at-arms spearmen, it's making it really difficult for my, my javelins to go after the pikes. So instead, I'm going to hold fire and actually go towards the gate over on the other side. And I'm going to help out the fight over here because uh, it's not looking good. Even though we've got Lannister surrounded, all these arrow towers firing down, it's causing a lot of damage to our troops. So I need to send some kind of support over there to quickly defeat this force and get them out of here. So we're going to line up. Fire! They're so quick about it too. They don't like worry about their footing, you know, the footwork. They're just like, whatever, just throw it. Just throw it. <laughs> 
There they go. Now they're trying to put more accurate shots in. Oh, we are just melting. Look at them. Look at them drop, guys. Look, and arrows are coming down. They are dropping so fast. Boom. Nice. Love that kill animation. There we go. We started to break the Lannisters. Or are they breaking? I don't know. Uh, no, they're shaking. They, they haven't broken yet. So I'm going to continue to fire my javelins into this unit. And thanks to my javelins, we were able to clean up this mess, but it is just red all over. <laughs> Blood all over the place. My Unsullied, unfortunately, are breaking. Uh, but finally, we have taken this gate. We can now capture it and silence these arrow towers. My ally uh, has some ammo for his archers, so he's kind of pushing them forward, getting them a little bit closer. And he was also wise enough to not send up his pikes first, so he still has two healthy unit of pikemen. Now this, this, the two units here, they are going to be absolutely vital into winning this battle. If we lose these pikes, just consider it game over because I think pikes can really win the day in siege battles. So it's going to be so important that these guys stay alive and we defeat the Lannister pikes. Uh, so we got, yeah, a little bit of a tedious uh, pike battle. I'm once again sending over my javelins over to the to, over to this side to support this engagement, uh, just trying to soften them up. Thankfully, I still have about half, a little bit less than half, but pretty much half of my ammo to really soften up the uh, Lannister pikes. Uh, back over here, uh, we do have a little bit of a fight. So my ally was trying to sneak over some troops. He's got some unsullied taken on, some men at arms, longbows. Uh, so that should be an engagement he can win. <laughs> Beautiful. Well done. Nice. Uh, so yeah, he, he was victorious there, but yeah, there's no way we're going to break through this. Absolutely no way. So if I could go back, I would have conserved some of my ammo with my archers. And I also... Oh, wait. Oh, it's that animation. I would have uh, kept my pikes in reserve as well. Not send them in first, but what can you do? Look at this guy. Really, dude? You're still fighting? <laughs> Kick him in the balls. <laughs> so you do have an advantage without having junk, you know? <laughs> like it, There's a little advantage. Also, we got some fighting over here. It's a pretty intense fight. It's mostly longbows, though. House Lannister just kind of sending in whatever they have to slow down our advance. So the Unsullied really blobbed up here. It's a little too blobbed up, but that's okay. We're taking on longbows. It's not a big deal. Get some zoom in close-ups here. Very cool, very cool fight. I'm actually going to send up some reinforcements. I want to try to uh, surround this Lannister force. Get around them and cause them to break. Lannister is actually sending, sending over even more archers to the front line. It's like he just he just wants to throw his archers away. It's, a, it's not a bad strategy. Uh, by doing that, he can really tire out our troops. And, uh, you know, obviously they'll get some kills. Okay, so yeah, very even match. The balance of power, I would actually say, is in favor of House Lannister. You can see they've got about 300 more men than us. But again, we are more elite. We are definitely more elite soldiers, so... Hopefully, like I said earlier, we can use our earlier we can use our skill to uh, defeat this Lannister force. Also, look at this: we got brave Lannister soldiers. Uh, they're spearmen, uh, three of them, who have walked past the pikes and are gauging are engaging the Unsullied pikes up close and personal. So, hats off to them. Very brave soldiers today, as they try to protect their ancestral ancestral stronghold. Go and solid go. Look at that. It's so epic. They did such a good job modeling these guys. Oh, and he loses his head. The spears are actually doing some pretty good damage here. The three spear uh, soldiers who are still. Oh, look, this guy just took out another one. Very nice. I mean, not good for us, but you know what I mean. I appreciate the effort. Uh, so let's go back over to this fight, this juicy fight here. Or the, the more uh, the archer reinforcements have arrived, but it's not like they're going to turn this battle around. We should easily win this one. Just a matter of time until they start breaking. And they are breaking as we speak. So a very nice engagement there. Let's head back over to this side. You can see Lannister's actually pushing up some troops. And they're good troops too. He's got men at arms and he has his pikes. 
So it's going to make it difficult for us to try to come around this way. Now, I was actually, at this point of the battle, I was, I was planning on a, a strategy. I was looking at this, like, it, this was a pretty desperate situation at this point. Because we're greatly outnumbered, we're tired, we lost a lot of troops early on. My strategy here, and if this plays out correctly, it could win us the day. He's got two elite units, or somewhat elite units, over on this side. That's a lot of troops. At the late game, at the late stages of the battle, you don't want to have troops like this just, like, out in the open. They could easily get outflanked. So my strategy going into here was to quickly, and that's the, that's the tricky part, quickly killing these uh, Lannister Pikes. And if we could break through them, rush through the streets, maybe have a small unit just hold off the Lannisters, just, you know, just, like... Just hold this choke point, rush through the streets, and then get behind Lannister here. And we would easily kill the two Lannister units. And also, we could attack from this side as well. So, you get what I'm saying? Basically, we'll push through here, run around this way, and then have these two units surrounded. And then we can focus the town center. So, basically, we're outnumbered, but we can, we can slowly chip away at their army without losing too many of our men. That's the strategy I was going to be going for. My ally was actually going to capture this arrow tower. I didn't want him to do that. I was telling him, no, man, don't, don't go that way because you're going to lose way too many soldiers in trying to take... I think originally he was trying to take this capture point, which is smart because you're trying to uh, weaken the morale of the defenders. But um, I didn't want him to do that because he would lose pretty much the entire force because we got Lannister, you know, troops waiting here and we have arrow towers which can wipe out armies in, in Total War Attila. So yeah, I was like, no dude, just get out of there. Just fall back. And of course, House Lannister is going to try to take advantage of this retreat. He's going to try to run them down. Though, these guys should be safe. Yeah, they should be alright. And then I, if, what I have over here, what's left of my force on this side, I just have this small unit of elite unsullied. 18 men just kind of hanging out, standing over dead Lannisters. Uh, most of my army is kind of in the middle and over on this side. Uh, I have my general Grey Worm. He's coming over here too. Pikes are moving forward. Looks, looks like he's going to get ready to attack us. We got the unsullied who are um, in this really cool uh, shield wall testudo formation. So again, I just I don't want him to attack. I want him to sit here like this because that buys us time where we can push through here. And we are getting close. You can see my javelins really put a dent in their center line. So I mean, just pike on pike battles are very frustrating. Uh, really, most of the battle is this so far. <laughs> just like watching these pikes battle it out. Uh, but we do have the advantage. We've got more men. I also think he should have just sent one unit at a time instead of doing both like this. Because it kind of put this tiny gap where he's getting harassed by a couple of Lannister troops. So he should have just stretched out one unit and then maybe even stack it with a whole nother unit, you know, instead of doing the two, like, column formation. Uh, very cool. So uh, Lannister actually continued to pursue these troops. So I told my ally just to turn around and engage him. He's got more men, so he would be able to flank around. He's got more units, I should say. Yeah, and he's going to fall back, but they can't fall back. It's too late. There we go. We're easily slicing these guys up. So that's another Lannister unit gone. So that's what I'm talking about. We've got to take advantage of these these situations where they're slowly trickling down troops where we've got to kill them easily uh, if we're going to win this one. Uh, finally, finally, we do have some some wavering. Yeah, the men-at-arms spears are starting to waver. And the pikes are starting to win this one. We still have to get through this unit too. It's a guardsman unit, so they're very, very good. They're very skilled. So it's going to be tough. But with the pikes, they should be able to butcher them. So we'll see what happens. There we go, there we go. He's now pushing. He's going to try to fill in the gap here. The little dent in his, his lines. Oh, man, I love this. So epic. It's Like, it is pretty grindy, but it's so cool to see, like, this this pathway of, like, no man's land. I tried to send up my javelins just to, 
Trust me, guys, I didn't try to execute them. I tried to set up the javelins to try to get in their face and break their spear, their pike formation. Didn't really work, but I just lost javelins. It's not a huge deal. A nice little battle as they fight in between a thousand pikes. The battle of a thousand pikes. I uh, still haven't engaged us here. This is really good because I think they could easily beat us with those pikes. So, again, we're just keeping them distracted as we wait for these forces to break through. He actually retreated his guardsmen over to hold the, uh, the town center, which is actually really good for us because now we don't have to worry about fighting them. Come on, break already. Just die. See what else is going on. So the battle has uh, simmered down over here. He still has another unit on this flank, but I don't think he's actually going to push him in. They still have a lot of troops. They both have Lannister generals. Uh, so they've got some cav we need to watch out for. Uh, but, you know, I think we've got a good chance of winning this one. It's going to be really challenging. It's going to be very difficult. But as long as these pikes stay alive, it will be fine. Oh, look at that guy go. Oh, look at him. Oh, he just unsullied him. <laughs> You got unsullied. Uh, so he's actually retreating his pikes now. And this is where I was like, all right, ally, just push, run, get as fat, go as fast as you can to get behind the Lannister troops all the way to the left. I sent in my javelins, what's left of my javelins, to keep these guys occupied. Basically pinning these guys down so they can't stop our uh, maneuvering troops. Now, unfortunately, my ally's troops gets a little, they get a little stuck here uh, fighting uh, House Lannister these pikes oh my javelins are getting chewed up <laughs> javelins are getting chewed up come on men quick I got more of my archers pushing forward again all I want to do is just try to protect these uh, these pikes and hold and prevent these guardsmen from coming down and stopping our advancing troops so yeah nothing else going on on that side over here Still nothing. I think I tried to charge in, but it, it's just suicide trying to take on pikes like this. That's why I like to have a two pike limit rule, because if it's just a giant battle of pikes, it can be very grindy and just choke pointy and just not as fun. So finally, we defeated those Lannister pikes once and for all. Now I'm setting up just like a wall of defense of just second son's longbows just to hold them back. And uh, my ally is now breaking Phalanx formation, quickly running over, and he's going to try to surround uh, House Lannister. Now, this is where things get really tricky. Look at what's moving out. He realizes that we're going to try to surround his men. We're going to try to get around them. So he's actually sending some guardsmen and Jamie Lannister to deal with that, uh, that little maneuver. And he's also falling back troops this way. So it's really important... That he gets both of his pikes set up and like basically defending a stance back to back because we are going to get surrounded here. But if he deploys the pikes correctly, it doesn't matter. As long as they don't have archers, they're not going to be able to kill these pikes. Not with swordsmen, especially not with cav. So we're, we're looking all right, even if we do get out surrounded. So here we go. He's sending up the pikes. We are getting bombarded by arrow fire. That's okay. Tower arrow fire. Uh, but they're charging in. And uh, here comes the next unit as well. Jamie Lannister in the infantry holding back, which is good for us. And here we go. They're moving up. And uh, Lannister's, what he's going to try to do is try to attack before they can form pike formation. And at this point, I was like, all right, dude, form pike. Form pike formation. Form pike formation. Please, form pike formation. He gets it out right at the last second, but still, they're able to pull off a really good charge there. And that was a little uh, little heartbreaking right there. Because now this second pike unit has to quickly charge up, that, uh, charge up that way and support this unit. And unfortunately, because they did not properly form pike formation, this unit is getting melted. I mean, they're getting chewed up. It's really bad. It's just, it's a, it's a sad sight. And here comes the reinforcements. See, if he was able to form this before they charged, that would have happened. Just slaughtering those men. And then here comes the Cav. Yep. And the Pikes looking the wrong way. And uh, that plan just backfired. And after at this point of the battle, it's looking really grim for the Unsullied. Looking very, very bad. 
So, you know, I, I don't blame my ally. I think my ally did an excellent job there. Really, what I, I blame myself for um, just losing my pike so early on. I could have really helped out in this battle if I still had pikes. That's just, that's the truth of it all. I mean, it was such a careless mistake for me to send in my pikes. But the battle's not over yet. There is still hope yet. As long as we have men to fight, there is a chance. Our strategy going into this battle now is to quickly push and take the town center. Of course, we've got to get through these guardsmen. But we still both have the two general uh, general bodyguard. Oh, also, by the way, guys, Lannister sent over another unit uh, uh, trying to flank around us. Grey Worm's just kind of holding this position. The reason he's holding here... Now, if I was this player, I would have sent this unit around and just surrounded them. Like, go ahead and charge with Grey Worm and then surround them. Uh, but I'm actually sending my Grey Worm back over to the other side. Or I will eventually. Uh, but back over here, yeah. Jamie Lannister's just like, it's over! You've been defeated. <laughs> does he have a... No, does he, Okay, so this is a two-hand Lannister. Not one-hand Lannister. Okay, no, this is actually my attempt here to try to break through. I was going to use my catapult crew as a bit of a meat shield to try to get through the pikes. And you'll see... We'll see how that turns out. I'm just... I'm so desperate for any strategy here. Yeah. Yeah, not a good strategy. Yeah, no. No, as soon as I saw that, I was like, no, guys, just stop. Just... Just go home. <laughs> go back to Essos. Just, just go away. This is not gonna. This is not gonna play out. So to take out these pikes, we've got to get them to attack us. That's really, that's really it. Just try to surround them, outmaneuver them, do everything we can. And uh, we are well. I'd say we're trying to fight for this position, but it's mostly just like archers who've used up most of their ammo. Oh, losing their heads. That's got to be uncomfortable. <laughs> That's got to be a gross way to die. All right, so there's seven minutes left in this battle replay. We still have a, we still have a decent amount of troops. We still have hope. The balance of power, it's not impossible. It's definitely in favor of the Lannister. Lannister goes ahead and charges in because he realizes that we're going to be flanking around pretty soon, so he might as well just charge in and try to take out Grey, Grey Worm's unit. But this is a an elite force of House Targaryen. And here we go. He's setting up the reinforcements. I'm sending over help. Uh, so now at this point, we've got to keep our forces together. We can't divide them. We've got to make a bold push to take out the defenses and hopefully capture the town center. Uh, we do have some troops over here holding back reinforcements, but there's really no need. Yeah. And these guys are going to probably lose here. They're just so outnumbered. There we go. Charge. Oh, my general is under attack. That's because I charged them in. So now we got Lannister surrounded. So we should be able to butcher these guys pretty quickly. Again, we're slowly chipping away at their forces. If they keep trickling down troops, we'll take advantage of it. We'll eat them up. We will eat them up. <laughs> and uh, there they go. They broke. So the two Grey Worms are ready to charge in and go for the town center. Uh, we do have a little bit of a... Uh, well, we don't really have anything here holding. So now Lannister's going to fall back with his pikes and probably send them over to uh, help uh, defend the town center. And uh, now the forces are marching forward. And this is it, guys. The final push of Castlery... Castle <laughs> Words are hard. Casterly Rock. Uh, the final push here to take the settlement and hope for a miracle. But uh, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Grey Worm is pissed. He is angry. He wants to bring down these bastards. But now he has fear because uh, he, he had he, he had sex with this lovely lady. <laughs> I guess, sort of. Uh, yeah. good, thing he, good thing he said goodbye to his... Uh, I'm drawing a blank on her name, but yeah, good thing he said bye to her because uh, it doesn't look good. <laughs> Does not look good. There we go. This is it, guys. We're taking on some elite troops. He's pushing up pikemen. He's actually going to send the pikemen over to defend this point right here. 
but you know, <laughs> don't look at the like the bounce of power. It's still not impossible, and I think if we can get some good kills, uh, our troops are definitely better fighters. Uh, but it, I think really what's going to help them is the out the arrow tower back here that's just shredding our troops. So, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. It's sad seeing these men die. Very sad. More troops charging forward. We can do this. We, I mean, we slaughtered their guardsmen, and that's like a really good swordsman unit. So we slaughtered them pretty well. We're gonna now move on to the next guardman, which is pretty depleted. Just try not to slow down. Just gotta keep going, keep advancing, and bring the pressure to House Lannister. Come on, men. This is for all the marbles. Well, I mean, here's the thing, right? If we lose this battle, we still, the queen still has the, the Dothraki. So, you know, she has a whole another army. House Lannister, even if they win, they've lost pretty much their entire army. And now he's fallen back. We're going to try to run him down. I did not want him to fall back. I was pretty upset by that. I was like, no, chase him down. Do not let them escape. And we're going to try to take advantage by stabbing him in the back. But they're going to the safety of the pikes. And this is just a solid curtain of red <laughs> it's just a death line of justice and my unsullied i mean i got no other choice right i just gotta charge in i don't have any skirmishers i don't have anything come on guys charge give him help now he does this weird formation by accident it was like yes there's hope at last look the pikes are all up in the in the air And we're going to try to surround them and close here. Uh, so there is still hope at last. We're closing in. But wait a second. Wait a second. I forgot something, guys. They still have Lannister. <laughs> they still have their damn calf. Jamie Lannister's flanking around. He's going to try to get some hammer and anvil. We do have Grey Worm trying to hold here. But then we've got the other Jamie Lannister coming around the flank. Oh, God. So, yeah, we just, we just don't have enough troops to take this on and the pikes were able to reform i mean thankfully we're still like in their face but there's just so many lannisters we have to kill we need a dragon over here like wouldn't that be great if just a dragon showed up and just burnt everything down like that would be amazing if they could actually add dragons to this game all right so gray worm's trying to fall back because he realizes that he's he's going to be surrounded by two jamie lannisters form shield wall quick Oh, so now this is it, guys. My strategy here, focus down Jamie Lannister. Try to kill him. And the cool thing about this battle, guys, we're actually going to see general versus general. It's pretty sweet. So we're, just look out for Jamie. Grey Worm is somewhere around here. But yeah, we're trying to take out Jamie now. If we can take him out, maybe we can destroy the morale of the Lannisters. It's a long shot, but really it's our only choice. It's our it's our only hope. Come on. Come on, Unsullied. Take him out. Just one good spear. Use teamwork. But yeah, we're trying to focus down his bodyguard. And then over on this side, we have the other Jamie who will be showing up pretty soon. There he is. There's Grey Worm. You see him? He's right there. He's battling Jamie. He's like, I will take you out. <laughs> Our men are breaking. Here comes the other cab unit. Go, Grey Worm. Go. Come on, dude. I like how he's not wearing a helmet. Just for, you know, so we know where he is. <laughs> oh, and there's the final blow. The final charge on the Unsullied army. And that's going to wrap up today's battle. Look at the balance of power just shift so quickly. It was a close one, guys. It was really close. Um, it wasn't like super close or anything. But considering that we had a lot less troops, I think we did really well. So let's look at the results here of the siege. So I got a ton of kills. Like my archers did really well. Uh, all of them getting over 100. Almost all of them. Two of them didn't do so hot. But my swordsmen did well. My spears did well. 
uh, my elite unsullied, my catapult. It was all very, sp it was spread nicely. This one got almost, well, not 300, but yeah, unsullied melee getting 259. My ally over here, pretty similar numbers. Uh, he did good with his spears, a lot of kills there. Uh, our catapults got the same exact kills. Look at that. What are the chances of that? And then we got Reinhard. He got uh, pretty good kills with his guardsmen. And then Zeno over here. I want to give a big thank you to all the players who participated in this. This was a last minute. Just wanted to get a cool Game of Thrones video. Uh, so thank you guys for joining in the battle. It was really epic, really fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this fight. Uh, Lannister were victorious, but their army's pretty much gone. So they got to get some mercenaries. Uh, but this is just a cool what if scenario. Thank you guys so much for joining us. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, leave a, uh, leave a comment, and share. And I will see you guys next time on the battlefield. Thanks for watching.